Hey everyone, so today I wanted to take a look. Um, this is a slightly different video, I should say. This isn't as popular as the ones that I usually respond to, but this is really related to a lot of what I see. People coming in who want to talk about vitiligo and autoimmune, what they're often talking about is, is what's in this kind of video. I haven't seen this in full, but let's, let's take a look. This is called Diet and Vitiligo by Life Force Homeopathy. Hi, my name is Dr. Rajesh Shah. I'm the director of Life Force, where we treat patients of vitiligo, uh, over 7,000 patients from all across the world. So, so just saying that you've treated 7,000 patients doesn't really tell me much. Uh, what's your success rate? What's your reversal rate? Let me see some before and answer, uh, after photos. I can just say from personal experience, when I've been to these kind of clinics in India and elsewhere, um, a lot of people have been going there for many, many years and see hardly any improvement in their vitiligo. Not to say that some people haven't benefited, but I, I don't know. Just telling me that you've seen patients doesn't tell me very much. Well, we'll talk about the diet in vitiligo. When I was a medical student, we didn't really understand much about the diet in vitiligo and the medical textbook. That's because doctors and medical students uh, who are training to be doctors don't learn much about diet in general, right? That's not their area of expertise. It's a whole untapped area of research, to be perfectly honest, or largely untapped, compared to how much money we've spent on researching drugs. It's never give pretty much any clear idea as to what is a good diet and what is a bad diet for vitiligo. However, after having treated so many patients of vitiligo, we have developed certain good insight into the diet required. So he's saying that this diet that he's about to recommend is uh, he has formulated it based on his clinical practice, right? And I can tell you after doing a lot of research and looking through many, many, trying to find papers on diet and vitiligo, there aren't very many out, out there. And I have a feeling whatever he's going to say, it's not backed up by the research, but making it crouched in his, the information that he's given so far, we've seen 7,000 people, which is a lot. Um, I don't know. It's, it's giving people a false sense of security, I'm imagining here, because, okay, you, you've used this principle, but ha have you seen results? I don't know. If I asked you what's the most important cell in the body, what would you say? Would you say the cardiac cell, the heart cell? Would you say the hep hepatic cell, the liver cell? <laughs> would you say some kind of immune cell? Uh, the answer, my friends, is none of these. The answer of the most important cell in the body is stem cells because they can become any of those things and more. We are born producing stem cells, but unfortunately, as we age, our production of stem cells goes down. Fortunately, there is a way to increase our endogenous production of stem cells even as we get older. To find out more, click the link on your screen. And and is the principle rooted in rooted in science is another question. And vitiligo. In brief, vitiligo patients should avoid eating a any kind of sour food, anything which is sour, such as sour uh, fruits, fruit juice, sour yogurt, sour pickles. Fruits, fruit juice, yogurt, pickles. The fact that he's using sour as a way to connect those various foods is a bit bizarre, right? So I once talked to a doctor in Delhi who basically told me to avoid vitamin C. Now there are papers, and I'll maybe I'll put one on the screen, that show that actually you can treat, people have had success treating vitiligo with vitamin C, right? So it's not the vitamin C, it's not the sourness. Um, could there be other reason to avoid most of those foods or some of those foods? Absolutely. Fruits in general probably have too much sugar. It depends on which food you're talking about. Fruits you're talking about. Uh, fruit juices almost certainly have too much sugar, right? Sugar can exacerbate oxidative stress, right? Um, yogurt, many people are sensitive to dairy and so on. So I personally think most people, most vitiligo, um, most people with vitiligo will probably be fine with dairy based on my own experience and based on how I reversed my vitiligo. But I could, what, what I'm saying is that you could recommend avoiding all those things and not use sour fruit, <laughs> sour foods as the unifying thing. Because what happens is someone's been to this kind of clinic, they're avoiding sour foods, then they come to me, their stomach is a mess because A, they've been eating too many vegetables. So those anti-nutrients in the vegetables have been messing things up. Probably they've been eating too many grains and lectins and so on and that stuff too. Um, and we need to restore their stomach acidity. And the way I'll do, the way we start is with lemon juice, for example, lemon juice and water, right? Which makes sense for a lot of reasons. And they will have really grave misgivings about lemon juice and water um, because, because of people like this telling them to avoid sour foods, right? So we need to be very specific. Fruit and fruit juice is one thing. Avoiding all sour foods Probably a bad piece of advice. All these sour food items must be reduced drastically or omitted from diet. Yeah, so again, I, I don't really understand why. If you're going to tell me something, tell me why. What is the mechanism by which sour is exacerbating this thing? Another thing which has to be omitted by vitiligo patients is seafood, in particular fish, because we have observed that after having fish, uh, there is a risk of certain chemicals from river or ocean. They enter the human system 
and could trigger a deliver or could address so is the problem the fish or is the problem the fish that are contaminated with certain heavy metals and, and chemicals and so on? He's not being clear here, right? But if I have access to good quality fish, can I include it? He's not telling me. I mean, I certainly think, again, what I've seen, people reverse vitiligo eating fish, people reverse vitiligo without eating fish. I don't think it's super, it's not important one way or the other. Um, I didn't avoid fish. I, I don't eat that much of it because I don't live near the sea or, the, or you know, near an area that's famous for seafood. My clients, if they want to include fish in their diet, they seem to do fine. These are the reasons for which we ask our patients to avoid sour food and fish. So all patients of Medilibo are better avoid, better avoid these particles. Third is about other animal uh, proteins such as meat. It is better if you could reduce the intake of meat because that means the animal protein. Could... So, so again, what is the what is the logic? There's no logic at all, right? Um, and again, just to give my own advice, I was a vegetarian for years. My vitiligo stayed the same or got worse. Um, I've been eating meat only for the last couple of years. And, and, and really, my vitiligo only reversed when I ate almost only meat. And even now, it's it's 100% gone now, pretty much. You can't see anything. And I eat meat every day. Um, I eat a lot of meat. Um, it's, my, it's my staple food, red meat especially, right? There's other foods I eat too. I'm not super strict with my approach to um, carnivory. Uh, but I've reduced, I've, I've basically completely reversed my vitiligo on a diet of mostly meat, right? Possibly uh, create certain uh, unwanted uh, neurological disharmony within the system, which could be responsible for an aggravation of vitiligo. I hope this helps. <laughs> no, it doesn't really help, my friend. I suppose there's a lot of things to say about this approach. Um, number one is, look, if it works for someone, I, I don't know, it's, there's no science to back, to back it up. I've looked up, if someone can link to a scientific paper telling me why sour foods, fish, and meat should be avoided for vitiligo, I'm more than happy to look at it. But I did my own research. I couldn't find anything. We do know a lot about what, not just what causes vitiligo, which uh, would same thing that causes any autoimmune disease, I guess, which is... Short answer is we don't know, but but gut health has something to do with it. The immune dysfunction has something to do with it too. Those things are related, right? 70% of the immune system is in the gut. So like I said, there's no science to really back this up, number one. Number two, there is science to back up other approaches, right? We know what's going on with vitiligo. We know that it's something to do. Yes, there's an autoimmune response. Yes, there's genetics. We can't do much about those two things. But what can we do something about? We can do something about reactive oxygen species. So that's um, things that are causing inflammation. Think about, you know, we've heard about antioxidants. This is really about pro-oxidants. And by the way, a lot of those pro-oxidants are found in vegetable foods, not in, not so much in meat. Avoiding meat, like you've got to give me a reason why it would be the case. Um, keeping in mind that we know from the anthropological data that humans evolved to eat meat, right? That, that was a staple food, not exclusively meat, but really quite a lot of meat, right? So if you're trying to recommend the appropriate diet for uh, disease reversal, the starting point from my point of view would be an anthropological human appropriate diet, number one, right? Um, I mentioned reactive ox oxygen species. The other thing really is the sympathetic versus parasympathetic tone. So if you can imagine the kind of stress you have when you're running away from a, a, a lion or a tiger, that's the kind of stress uh, response called the sympathetic nervous system. And we know that in today's day and age, uh, we tend to have too much sympathetic tone. Um, we tend to be too much stressed uh, at low levels, right? Not those high levels of stress uh, when you're being chased by a tiger, but low level levels of stress when you're having a fight with your spouse or your child or your boss or whatever, or you're just frustrated with watching the news, whatever it may be, right? Those low levels of stress are contributing to a certain kind of sympathetic tone, which is bad for autoimmune, which aggravates autoimmune. So if he had said things like breathing and yoga and meditation, like that, that would be far more science-based in my mind than anything to do with sour foods. Um, the sour food trope is, is a complete, like, why are we talking about this? It doesn't make any sense at all. And if you're serious about diet, then you need to look at diets that reduce reactive oxygen species. Ketogenic carnivore diets are one such dietary form. There may be others, but the one that has the most data behind it is really ketogenic diets. Uh, thanks. With that, I'll see you in the next one.